for the average person, um, people think that worship is singing songs, what we do that first 15, 20 minutes before church. But as you really dig into the truth behind what worship is, number one, that we are created to worship. Number two, that our whole life can become worship unto the Lord. Romans 12, 1 tells us, therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercies, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. So when you understand fully what, what a life of worship looks like, it is a complete surrendering of oneself unto the Lord for his glory and his purposes. And that's truly what worship is all about. Um, it's not just the singing of songs, but when we come together corporately to lift up a song of praise unto the Lord, there's power that comes when God's people come together. And so on a short answer, that's, you know, that's what I would say worship is. What is worship? Worship is a statement saying that God is greater than who we are. And it really is mm -hmm. uh, an act of humility. Mm -hmm. When we come together to acknowledge how great God truly is, and in this context, we do it through singing and music, and it's because we get our emotions involved. Yeah. And uh, music is a great way of doing it because it's something that we express, and of course, we understand the power of the spoken word. We just happen to do it in pitch and with a chord progression yeah. behind it. And so <laughs> that's why I love doing it because it gets ingrained in your, not only in your mind, but also in your heart as well. And music is such a powerful medium to do that. So there is a huge significance to Good Friday. A lot of people would think, why do we worship and why would you ever have a concert on Good Friday as opposed to on Easter Sunday, the resurrection? Um, and I totally get that. You know, we are really awesome when we want to just celebrate the victory of the, the cross. But I think the power behind doing a worship concert on Good Friday is because without a death, there can be no resurrection. And so when we come together on Good Friday, it shouldn't be a time of sorrow because we already know the victory has been won. We already know the moment Jesus decided to live in obedience to death unto the cross, what that cross represents to us is his grace, is his mercy, is his kindness, is our ability to be resurrected in Christ. And um, I just think it's the beginning of life starts with death. And so we celebrate Amen. that. Um, I know Galatians 2.20 was a scripture that was extremely important in my transformation. And it basically says, um, I have been crucified in Christ and I no longer live. But I, the life that I live now, I live in, in the one who died for me and the one who loves me. And so we get an opportunity to die with Christ. When we get baptized, we die with Christ when we go into that water. And we come out of that water born again into new life. And so Good Friday is the perfect day to celebrate the resurrection power of Jesus Christ through the death on the cross. I agree. It's a, it, it's a day of victory. You know, and, and we think of Good Friday as a day of sorrow, and maybe that was our upbringing when we, you know, when we were young. But really, it is a day of victory, and maybe it's time to change that. You know, maybe it's a, Good Friday is a, is a day where we want to change the... Um, the, 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 the whole theme of it or the whole, the whole atmosphere of what Good Friday is and, and, and instead of being somber and, 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 and so on and so forth, but really understand that uh, it is a victory, that death is the beginning of new life, you know, where, where God opens up a whole new chapter for each and every single one of our lives and ultimately we do live in victory and, and, and we don't even want to acknowledge maybe that, that, um, that Good Friday is something that should be somber you know when it's in reality it's not it was necessary for us to get there but ultimately the victory is what we do celebrate and it just culminates in, in the uh, in the in the sunday resurrection that makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. i remember pastor mike would always try and encourage people and teach people that the main event is that 20 minutes before the message. It's that, that opportunity where we as the children of God 
can come together collectively, enter into the presence of God with thanksgiving, and encounter his manifest presence. You know, the Bible um, talks about how good and pleasant it is when God's people dwell together in unity. When we sing and praise unto the Lord in unity, there is a commanded blessing. So every Sunday when we have that 20 minutes before church, it's just a glimpse of what heaven's going to look like. So we really wanted to create a setting where it, we could just go all out for Jesus and just everything that was on our heart, everything that uh, is on our minds, anything that we wanted to cry out to God for, we would have an extended time of worship where there is no message necessarily because worshiping him is the message. Worshiping him is enough. And I think people are missing the power of taking time out of their schedule, prioritizing it, because we all live busy lives, but prioritize coming out to a worship concert because what we are contending for is a living counter a living encounter with a living God. And when you give yourself fully to surrender God and set that time apart, you can encounter the miraculous. You know, like Glenn is saying, you're going to go through stuff in life. The answer is in the power of your praise. You know, worship is warfare. And every single battle that I've ever faced, I faced it in my worship closet first. Because what happens, and you can see this all throughout the book of Psalms, um, you know, David was hard-pressed because his enemies were after him. He's crying out to God, and all of a sudden, he's worshiping God, and God changes his perspective. God builds his faith as he's worshiping God. Why does that happen? Because it's, when you worship God, you elevate, and your perspective gets bigger as you seek the face of God. And no longer does this issue that you think is so pressing, is so unbearable, is, is so big. Because the glory and the grandeur of who God is in his manifest presence diminishes all those problems. And then you can see, your eyes are open to see the victory that, that Jesus already has for you. And so because we're limited on Sunday, we wanted to create an environment where we don't have to cut worship short. I mean, we can just go into the Holy of Holies. We can run into the throne of grace. We can shout. We can cry. We can dance and experience what freedom looks like. You know, because the word tells us whom the son has set free is free indeed. And so we want to see God's children experience total freedom, freedom to just be themselves in the presence of the Lord, in the house of the Lord. I, I believe God wants to remind us that we're all emotional creatures. And like what Teresa was saying in, in the worship setting, we can feel all kinds of emotion. So my one word answer to that would be emotion, humanity. In one word, I would say love. I think because God is love. And when God is love, if you are encountering the manifest presence of God, you experience love. Um, and the cool thing is, it's not the kind of romanticism love that you think you're going to have, but it's this peace and this comfort and this overwhelming sense of joy, of acceptance that you feel in the presence of God that is hard to articulate. Um, in one second, when you encounter God face to face, you not only know that he knows everything there is to know about you, good and bad. He, he knows the breath of your life and what has happened and what you're going through. But in that moment, you, you, you feel so much of his acceptance and his love and his comfort and his joy and his peace that a storm can come right in that moment and you're okay because you're in the arms of Abba Father, and he's going to protect you. He's going to care for you, and he's going he's gonna to take you through it. And, you know, sometimes you, you feel um, that hype, you know, and hype is good. I'm, I'm all for hype, you know. Like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not anti-hype. Hype is really good. Um, but it's more than just hype, right? Uh, you can... In worship is a place where you can experience, like what Glenn was saying, the breadth of what hum the human experience is. You yeah. can feel sorrow in worship. You can feel joy. You can feel elation. You can feel excitement. You can feel conviction. I mean, sometimes I felt anger. 
You know, as I reflect on the enemy and what he's trying to do to God's people to oppress them, it makes me angry. And I just want to do a lion's war to attack the plans of the enemy and break the assignments of the enemy against God's people. Uh, so you can have so many expressions of our humanity in worship, but encountering God himself is love, agapeo love. It's a celebration of being created, I suppose. It's uh, God is the creator, we are the created, and as we are created in his image, we begin to feel, or at least begin to understand, ought to understand what God is feeling because we're feeling these things, you know. And I was just kind of reflecting on how uh, we would feel sorrow in, in, in worship and the immediate answer that came to me was because, you know, we shouldn't feel sorrow when we're supposed to be in a place of joy. But in a, in a way, you can kind of feel sorrow because you want other people to experience the joy of having a life with Jesus Christ. You know, so that makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. And other than that, it's just, it's a good reminder of how we are human. Mm -hmm. And all these emotions that we feel are real. And I believe that when you come to a place and just worship freely, you reminded of being human once again and what it means to be created by an almighty creator. And because of that, we can once again stand in awe of how amazing he truly is and how wonderful the life that we truly have in him. Mm -hmm. That's a great question. What can somebody expect? Expectation is the breeding grounds for miracles. So they should come expecting something for sure. So I think that um, a person should expect uh, to be overwhelmed in a good way. I think a person should expect to be filled with joy, be excited, uh, to be amazed at the wonder of God, to... Um, maybe possibly be a little overwhelmed, you know? I think yeah. sometimes um, we don't forewarn people. Uh, we don't warn people that it, the love of God is overwhelming sometimes. So they should expect to be overwhelmed in a good way though, you know? Like that feeling of, oh my gosh, this is so amazing, I don't know what to do with it. And, um, you know, I think that they should expect for goodness, something good and great to happen. Um, and definitely expect for their minds to just be blown. Yep. Uh, you're gonna just be, you come into the house of the Lord to worship God and in His presence and His marvelous presence, and you're just gonna get blown away. Whatever you think it was, it's always gonna be better. Yeah. Expectation is a great word. Um, what I thought about is well, Jeremiah twenty nine thirteen says, um, "Seek and you shall find me when you search with all your heart." And I believe that's a good reminder for all of us is when we go into a place of worship, we can expect mm -hmm. um, for God to, to bring us deeper, but at the same time, he's elevating us. But in a nutshell, what he does is he introduces to us a whole new dimension of living. And that's what I love about um, experiencing a lot of different things with Christ that we never even knew existed. But like I said, it's, it's a whole new dimension of living that we just want to introduce to people. And as we worship, God begins to reveal different things about life. And maybe we can talk about how heaven invades earth. And it's just a place where heaven and earth collide at mm. that very moment in time. And mm -hmm. so uh, it's just a whole new spiritual dimension that God is preparing us for a life in eternity yeah. and up in heaven. So it's expectation, dimension, depth, going deeper, but also elevating us at the same time. Yeah, amen. Amen. I think it's exciting because people will encounter truth. You know, the Word of God says that Jesus is the truth. And I think that in a world where we are over inundated with other people's truth, we need absolute truth. And if you want to encounter absolute truth, then you want to count, encounter Jesus himself. And, uh, you know, as a new person, 
this is how I kind of likened my first experience with it. You know when you go to the beach and it's like super hot outside, it makes the water extra, extra cold. Uh, and you know that feeling where you go and you're like, go ankle deep and you're like, oh, I don't know if I want to go in. I'm like freaking out. It's cold. I'm not sure what to go in. So maybe you go like to your knees and you're like slowly going into the water and then you get waist high. And for all us girls in the house, you know, that's the moment, the truth of whether you're going in or not. It's like some people, they go waist high and they're at that point where they're ready to just dive into deep waters with Jesus and they don't ever get there. And so that's what I think it's going to be like. If you've never experienced a worship concert, it's going to be like going into that beach and you're going a little bit by little bit by little bit and it's a little uncomfortable, but there's going to be a moment where you decide, you know what, I don't know this is going to be good. I'm sure it's going to shock me, but I'm going to dive in. And sometimes you just got to do it. You just got to dunk yourself 100%, just go all in. And then when you do, you submerge yourself into living waters and you come out and you feel so refreshed that's what it's gonna feel like Whew. I believe as we serve a faithful God that in a way God is enticing us you know, because as he prepares everybody for the afterlife, you know, um, we've talked about how living here on earth and, you know, being worshipers, we're going to be worshipers for all the rest of eternity when God calls us home. And so God, as I mentioned, God kind of reveals to us what it's going to be like. He reveals to us a little bit at a time that he's here, that he's with us, that he's around us. And sometimes we don't see that, or maybe we lose sight of that because we see with earthly eyes. But in the book of Ephesians, when it says that we have to see with the eyes of our heart, I believe in times of worship like that, it strengthens that. It, it uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Supports it. You know, you guys know what I'm trying to say, but it's, we begin to uh, see more and more with our spiritual eyes. And um, again, God reminding us as we, as, as we go along and, and as, as we live our life here on earth. And it's understanding that it's temporary here, that we're, we're on a journey here on mm -hmm. earth. But ultimately, when we go to heaven, I guess it's my answer my question. Is that it? Is it good? Okay. Yeah. Um, I think when I, uh, my understanding of when heaven and earth come together, you know, you hear that expression of open heaven all the time. What is open heaven? And uh, is that just a Christianese religious thing that people say? Like, what is open heaven? And in all honesty, um, we have the power to usher heaven to earth because the Bible teaches us to pray like that. As it is in heaven, so let it be here on earth. Okay, so what does that look like when heaven invades earth? Well, it's heaven coming to earth. So if you want to know what that looks like, what does heaven look like? You know, what does the Bible teach us about heaven? There's people standing around at the, the feet of Jesus just saying, glory, glory to God. Holy, holy, holy is he. Um, there's no sickness in heaven. There's no brokenness in heaven. There's no anger in heaven. There's no insecurity in heaven. There's no um, comparison in heaven. There's only joy and peace and love and compassion in heaven. And so when I, when I envision us experiencing heaven on earth, I, ex I, I imagine people coming into the house of the Lord and worshiping him in spirit and in truth, open heaven over that place, and the Shekinah glory, the, the manifest glory of God falling into a room in such a way as described in the Bible where people fell face down. And in that moment of posture before a glorious God, in our moment of need, the blind will see, the sick will get healed. Those who are inflicted with cancer will be healed in a second. Those who are bound with addictions can be set free in a second. Those people who are crippled and cannot walk can be set free in a second because it takes one second in the manifest presence of God to receive the fullness of heaven. And so we don't have to live on this earth bound by sickness and anger and hate and jealousy. 
we can experience the freedom that God expected, the freedom that he wanted, and the freedom that he's given to his children through his son, Jesus Christ. And so that's what we're contending for. We're contending for that to be experienced by every person that would come into the house of the Lord and surrender to him in worship. I'm kind of resonating with the word identity. And I think a lot of people are going to have a deeper understanding of their identity in Christ. Um, all the um, serendipities of having an, a, a healthy understanding of your identity in Christ, right, uh, will bring healing to their relationships. Uh, first of all, loving themselves because they understand what who their identity is, is coming from and who should they model their lives from. Right, so that'll heal the relationships in their life, physical healing and all that stuff. Absolutely, God can absolutely do that, and we've experienced some of those things in mm -hmm. our life mm -hmm. firsthand as well. And those are just amazing uh, serendipities and testimonies um, as God moves in, 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 in settings like that, and even settings out of that, but just the whole life of worship that will be. Um, yeah, I don't know what I'm, what I'm going to say. Go ahead. Yeah. I think um, for me, I have great expectation that there will be a greater sense of unity amongst God's people. Uh, yeah. That, you know, there's only one universal church. But there's one church in our heart behind the worship um, concert, the worship experience on Good Friday is that it's just God's people. It's his church. It's not a campus. It's not one particular church but all of god's children coming together regardless of what denomination you are because you know we all know denomination was never god's plan that was that was man's plan and it's just a place i expect for brothers and sisters of god to come together and have total transparency total authenticity total comfort to worship god and in that place um we will all be elevated and honestly that's who god's calling into his presence come just like you are just come as you are and if that person can walk out knowing that they are loved by God exactly the way they are, knowing that they've been saved um, be through a Savior, and now they can live in a, a redeemed life, uh, elevate it in their faith walk with the Lord intimately, personally, and be so hungry to want more, then that would exceed my greatest expectations for the worship concert. So join us Good Friday, Holly Eve Elementary School. April 19th, 7 p.m. Make sure you're there. And I just want to encourage you because I know how life is and you're going to be expecting your miracle moment with God. The world and all of the demons that are out there are going to try to discourage you from coming. You'll get a flat tire. Somebody's going to call. Don't let the distractions of this life keep you from your miracle moment with God. Just settle it in your heart that you're going to come and be with us and experience an amazing worship night as God's children and let nothing get in your way. Like the woman with the bleeding for how many years she pressed through everything that was in her way just to touch the hem of Jesus' garment. Push through everything that would challenge you to not come and come out and be with us as we all experience our miracle moments with Jesus together. Woo! Love you guys. <laughs>